Welcome to TAMA Talks, brought to you by the Torrance Art Museum Advocates. I'm Janine Madden, current TAMA president, and I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Today's talk will feature work currently on view at the Torrance Art Museum. The show closes Saturday, June 17th, so be sure to stop by if you're in the area. TAM hours are Tuesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. The museum is located at 3320 Civic Center Drive in Torrance. Because it is a municipal museum, a program of the City of Torrance Cultural Services Division of the Community Services Department, admission to the museum is free, but donations are accepted and very much appreciated. You can find the TAM on the web at www.torrenceartmuseum.com. This discussion is being recorded and will be posted to our YouTube channel with all of our previous TAMA talks. You may access it from our website, www.tamadvocates.com. Today, we are joined by artist Lori Lipton. She has a solo show in the TAMS Gallery 2 called Drawing, which is also the name of her new book. She was inspired by the religious paintings of the Flemish school and tried to teach herself how to paint in the style of, of the 16th century Dutch masters and failed. While traveling around Europe as a student, she began developing her own peculiar drawing technique, building up tone with thousands of fine cross-hatching lines like an egg tempera painting. According to Laurie, it's an insane way to draw, but the resulting detail and luminosity is worth the amount of effort. My drawings take longer to create than a painting of equal size. You can't really experience the impact of the detail and intensity of one of my larger pieces on a, com on a computer screen. They have to be seen in the flesh. And I have a short little bio. Nobody draws like Lori Lipton. She was born in New York City in 1953, began drawing detailed images at age four and never stopped. She was the first person to graduate from the Carnegie Mellon, Mellon School University with a fine arts degree in drawing. She's lived in the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, France, and the UK, and is currently residing in Los Angeles. Her work has been exhibited extensively through Europe and the United States. Method and subject converge in Lori Lipton's large scale and, in, and exacting pencil drawings. With imagery as dense and intricate as her line work, she draws with the precision of a brain surgeon. The results are stunning, worrying, funny, and above all, powerful. And so, with that, I would like to welcome you to Tama Talks today. I am beyond excited to chat with you about your work. Thank you. I'm beyond excited to talk about my work. I love talking about my work. <laughs> Fantastic. And I, I completely agree with the portion that says um, they really are, uh, again, the computer, what we're going to show today is going to be really hard to, um, we can zoom in, but really when you're there, I could just imagine them swallowing them up. It's uh, swallowing you up. It's as a viewer, they're just so intricately done. All right, let's go ahead and um, let's talk about this first piece. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there are eight pieces in the exhibition and each one is from a different uh, show that I had. So the pieces, they range from pieces from 2005 to, I think this one is the latest one, which is 2015. And this one was taken from a show I did at, um, in Los Angeles at the Ace Gallery, it was called Techno Rococo. Oh. And I just went crazy with all kinds of technological things. This is called 3D. And she's looking for some place to plug in. And um, so I did her with my left hand, I'm left-handed. And the background cartoony bit I did with my right hand. Oh, she took almost longer, longer. Sure. sure, because it was very, very difficult. But uh, so this was just like a piece from that show. I think these these pieces from uh, in in uh, Torrance are from four different shows. Okay. And is it on fabric? I I can see some. Oh no, it's it's pencil. It's, 
it's pencil on paper. All of them are pencil on paper. And some, you know, the black black yes. is charcoal pencil. I see. And I think maybe what it is, is I was looking up in this area and thought maybe that you had pieced together, but actually that is just the what you've Probably. done with your drawing. Yes. So and I'm going to zoom when you get in. up close to the background. Yes. You can see that every line that's done with uh, like a 0 0.03 pencil, it's a it's a mechanical pencil and it's it's just all lines. That's what makes the fabric look like the fabric. All of this. Yes. Lines. It's all lines, very, very fine lines. Extraordinary. Even that's this close looking at her her glove I, I tried to make it more you know like uh the 3d like the the virtual reality stuff but over the top uh yes over the top so i will just as much as i want to i'm just i was fascinated by the degree of let's see so all these little all the little smiley faces on the ends of the screws i mean it added a degree of, I don't even know if the word whimsy is appropriate because it was so, it's so fantastical, but, but you know, it's, it's frightening very, and all at the same time. Well, I think technology is fantastical and mm -hmm. frightening all at the same time. But the thing is that what I do, I mean, these look planned and they look very, you know, precise and obsessive. But what I do to begin with is I paint on charcoal and I draw into it. So what it suggests to me, so let's say I have an idea of a woman with this, you know, um, a virtual reality headset and she's looking to plug herself in. Then I will paint all over the place and that's what, you know, my imagination runs free and that's what I get. Wow. Just, and are you influenced by, what, what, what are you, your influences? Well, um, I've been drawing since I was around four years old. So that's like a long, long time. <laughs> I don't want to think about how long it was. <laughs> but so everything, everything, black and white TV, the Twilight Zone, sci-fi, um, uh, Memling, Van Eyck, um, everything that came into my orbit sucked I got sucked into my artwork until finally it was like giving birth to an elephant I finally got my own thing I got Lipton-esque so I am totally Lori Lipton there is no one who does it's not surreal it's not real it's an ism that falls in between the slots it's 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 hard to, you know, really categorize it. In my old age, I'm doing a lot of political stuff now and stuff about climate change. It's just anything, you know, I'm, I'm sort of processing my life and it's coming through and into my drawings, basically. Uh, and and uh, I've said this now to every single um, artist that we've done a talk with for Baker's Dozen, uh, which is actually the show in the main gallery, uh, just down the hall from your from the gallery where your work is being shown, um, there is that thread of uh, political, you know, uh, current day commentary in the artwork of every single artist that's, to be quite honest with you, that shows at the museum. I think it's a thread that Max pulls on often in his um, selection Good. of artist work. Good, because yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on. Right. And Right. Ignoring it and making a, a a painting of red color. I mean, forgive me. I'm sure the painting of red color is significant <laughs> and, and affects people in their way. And it's good in the living room if you have a red carpet. But, you know, we should rage in everything, in our art, in our talks. Everything should be raging right now. Yes. Yes. Well, again, the juxtaposition of the rather um of the background with the figure is is not subtle i mean it's stunning when you look at it stunning in a in a way to say you know what are, are you drawing a comparison between the two um 
And the fact that you did one with your right hand where you're not right-handed is just very cool. Well, there's a, to be there's honest, a it's self. almost like looking at your four-year-old drawing self in the back. Oh, no, my four-year-old drawing was very good, actually. Yes, that's what, oh, oh, so, so, so much better than this. Yes. Oh, <laughs> It would be really, and do you have any of that work? It would be so interesting to look back. I do. And there's a, actually, there's a film, there's a documentary film about me called Love Bite. You can find it on my website. Okay. And it okay. does have my childhood drawings in it and, and, and shows the progression. Oh, that is fantastic. I will be sure to include a link to that uh, in the in the language that we used when we put up this piece right. today. So that's I'm fantastic. I'm surprised my parents didn't have me committed. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm so happy that they didn't because look at this work. It's just exquisite. Okay, so we're going to, let's see if this works. Oh, oh. yeah, very nice. Well okay. done. So I, 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 this is one of those pieces where the longer I looked, just like with anything, right? The longer I looked, the more, the more I noticed particularly the the dangling uh, lenses, <laughs> which is for some reason, and I'm not sure if it's just the way the light is hitting them, but for me, this is very, um, gosh, it's not even Escher-esque, but it is. I mean, there's just so much happening in it. And perhaps it's just the use of um, line work and color and uh this is also done in charcoal this actually was done mostly in pencil pencil okay and, um this is from a show this is cele called celebrity and it's from 2006 and it was a, a show called weapons of mass delusions mm -hmm. and it was in liverpool in the uk in a big art center in liverpool and um it's interesting because it once I moved to LA, it was so relevant here too. So I put it in another show here. But um, yeah, they're, all the guys are well hung. Yes, they well are. Hung. And it's about the illusion of celebrity and everything. And I just liked the, I played with the composition here. I like that she's sort of that, that uh, rope is from her and she's keeping them at bay, you know? Yes. It's like it's from it's not actually but the the composition looks like that and also the way that my eye moved from her eyes and mouth to the lenses of the camera uh you know the shape and the the way that the light is hitting all it really just your eye flows right through it and um interesting how they're all and, and again it, it evokes a certain amount uh, a certain place in time just by the way that the photographers are dressed it's not like you know paparazzi of today no it's more like the you know the the hollywood stars of yesteryear yes and her eyes do look exactly like the camera lenses right yeah and they are the lens to them and and um and the way she's looking at us and even her finger placement, all of it, just. And the bra. <laughs> yes, yes. Wonderful. This is from 2006? This is from 2006, yes. Love this piece. Fantastic. Just so powerful. Um, democracy from 2012. Yes. Now I had a show. I have been living in Europe for 36 years. And then I moved back to LA in 2011. And I was taken up by the Ace Gallery. And he asked, I, I said, I'd like to do a show about oh, moving yeah. back, you know, moving back to the US. And so this is from the show called LA Sue real and not surreal but s-o-u-s -S, okay which means underneath reality yes not above underneath and this is called democracy and the one thing that really struck me when i moved back was the difference between the news here and the news in britain the yes. news in britain is very intelligent and very nice and is not interrupted every two minutes by 10 minutes of commercials and um, here, 
it was aimed at like sort of five-year-olds and they're yelling at you all the time and men are pointing, especially when the commercials, there's always these white guys pointing at you in commercials in the US. That's the one thing I noticed immediately. And so this is about the showmanship of, yeah, democracy. And I had never seen the GOP before. I didn't, I mean, I sort of, you know, on the news, in the BBC and stuff that, you know, you sort of, but here it was so prevalent. And so, yeah, this was my reaction to it all. And tell me, let's walk through this if you would, if you would. Um, so all of these heads, is this a, like a conveyor belt or is it simply like a, a scaffolding from which they are hung? Well, that's good. I don't know. Maybe, you know, this is this is another interesting thing. You know, I go do these things and they become more than my idea. Sure. It's like writing a novel. You have an idea like the characters and the plot, but then the characters get away from you. Sure. So someone reading the novel will have a totally different take than the author. So I what see. you just said, you know, that could be the heads of other things. It could be, you know... That is totally valid. So that's why images are so much better than words. So mm -hmm. when I tell you, oh, this and this and this, and then you say, yes, but yes. <laughs> sure, right, right, right. Images are done. layered. And, and, and also when anyone looks at this, I mean, a Republican can look at it and say, see something else. I mean, it's subjective. Art is very subjective. It is. It is, but but I think the message of this piece uh, is not lost on us as Americans in particular, this idea that, you know, particularly recently, this idea that there is the throng of people who are um, being incredibly manipulated. Like I get that whole mocking Jay sense, you know, this idea that that and and what intrigues me and frightens me a bit is the pipe work. Like <laughs> I want to know what's being piped into there. You know, and the fact that he has his finger on the switch that, oh, my goodness, this is one of those pieces in which you could stand in front for a super long time, just looking at like the brickwork and the, it, this is all from your imagination. Yes. And when I get into a picture, you know, I have a vague, I do a vague cartoon when I start out. And then I get more and more. I go around and around and I, I, I get more and more detailed. And I'm not, it's interesting. I'm doing a 20 foot drawing right now. And I noticed I was not there for three hours. I don't know where I was, oh but my. I was not there. And that, I mean, it's addictive. It's yeah. like drugs. Yes. I was the yeah. drawing. And that's why I never go out I'm, unless someone comes and goes, Lori, you're coming out. And I go, because I'm just, time doesn't, people always ask me, how much time does a drawing take? I don't know. That's why that's your point. So big. <laughs> that, I mean, that's, I mean, I just, I'm, yeah. I'm in there. So the brickwork, the people, the heads, they just, it's like meditation. Yes. Yeah. And, and you were saying uh, when you said nobody draws like Lori Lipton, that idea that you are, um, is it a layering process or just simply that that application of fine line over fine line until the image reveals itself? Well, the, to call these drawings is a very deceptive thing. Yes. These aren't, these are actual paintings in graphite. What I do is it's like egg temper, an egg temper painting is you have the imprimatura, you have, you know, you have the color of the, of the canvas, and then you make a cartoon out of, uh, you know, lines, mm -hmm. and then you build up the form using a gazillion white lines. Uh, it's white paint with a tiny little brush, and you build up the form until, you know, you get something, and then you glaze the color over, and then you build up the form again, then you glaze the color over. That's how these actually it's 14th century artists got amazing detail. You right. can go into a Van Eyck painting, Van Eyck painting background right. yes. in the city all the way. You could see the window panes in the city in the background. 
that's the amount of detail you can get with uh, egg tempera painting. And that's the amount of detail. I invented this way of drawing because I could not quite grasp egg tempera. And also I couldn't afford it. I was a young artist struggling and sable brushes and oil paints. And it's you don't work on board uh, canvas, you work on board, but still, um, I just, you know, pencil and paper is the cheapest goddamn thing you can do as an artist. <laughs> right, right, right. That and using yourself as your, um, you know, as your own muse. Yeah. Um, unreal. Just, oh my goodness. Okay, so. Love this piece. And I'll tell you why, because I work for, my real day job is working for a plastic surgeon. So this piece resonated and I want to send it to him and say, you realize this is what you're doing to people who come to you, but I will let you speak on it because you I know I still have this title. piece. All these pieces are available. I, I still have this piece. So oh my, really? They're all available for sale. So oh my goodness, that's so unusual because normally when they're at the museum, you know, Max makes it really clear that that it's not a gallery. And so, oh, no, I know. I know. You can't, yeah. you can't, you can't buy it through the, the museum. You can buy it through me, though, through my okay. website. Okay. Uh, this but piece anyway, is amazing. Uh, enough of the commercial. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. But and it's no, so no. true. Like, this is what surgeons try to avoid. But what we're seeing is faces like this, uh, particularly from poorly placed juvederm and fillers, <laughs> you know, or, or inept inept surgeons, but I, I cannot wait to hear your your thoughts on what inspired you to create this and all well, of it. This is called Enhanced and it's from 2011. And I moved to LA in 2011. It's one of the first pictures I drew after I moved to LA. And I had a lunch with four ladies <laughs> and we're all sitting around. I was the oldest one at the lunch and they were like 30 to my age and every single woman had had something done even the 30 year old mm -hmm. and they all looked very odd yeah I mean they didn't look younger they right. just looked odd mm -hmm. and I thought I mean maybe I was wrong I thought I looked like the only earthling at the table <laughs> um yeah so I thought well yes. how odd is this why yeah. Why would you do this? First of all, I would never have surgery unless something life-threatening was going on. Why would you push yourself? You know, anyway, so yes. that made me think. And that's why, you know, that faces me. I had a, listen, I had a, I had a mirror and I was going like this the entire time. I was pushing my face out and that, every time I see this drawing, my face hurts, okay? Yes. But, yes. um, so... And the background is just all the magician. I, I I painted, you know, all, all, you know, and then I drew into the background just to get it going. And by the way, those are not my tits. <laughs> okay, that's my it's face, but they are terrifying. <laughs> I was a little jealous for a minute there. I, I wish it was because that's nice, and you know. But anyway, so. But, but you know, you got everything down to that. We call it a lollipop. So we got everything oh, down really? to that scar. Yeah, that's oh. a lollipop scar. So. Well, and the that reason I know that, NA, reason, say, say that again. The reason I know that, because I had a friend who showed me, yes. she pulled up her shirt. Yes. I didn't even ask to see. She went, look. And I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes. That's funny. I, I uh, met a very, very good friend who uh, that's how we met. I told her yeah. who I worked for and she lifted her shirt and said, he did me. And I was like, well, we're going to be friends for a long time. <laughs> but yeah, you got the scar and that uneven NAC. I mean, really. Um, and the fact that her that so this is you, but not your boobs. Those are not my boots, and this is unfortunate because okay. my has well, it isn't really also unfortunate cool because I think working on the other end of it, yeah. you know, we see a lot of the issues that come about yeah. from uh, all right. sorts of. I'm a I'm a very poor uh, spokesperson for my boss. That's why right. I hire and fire and do his website. <laughs> um, what I what intrigued me was this vice and the hearts. 
these hearts on the screws. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, narcissism, they love, you know, why would you, if you love yourself, oh, no, actually, it's self-hate, because why would you yes. put yourself through that? That's really but what it, it is. It's not self-love, actually. It's self-hate. Yeah. It is a, um, a self-loathing that you really yeah. are comparing yourself. I'm thinking of Michael Jackson, the amount of self-loathing he must have had to do that to himself because he was such a good looking kid, you know, and, and young man. And, you know, just so I also I was thinking, you know, sitting at that table, I am the only one who's comfortable in my own skin and face. Yeah, yeah. That, that is a lot. That is a lot. And, and it is a multi-billion dollar business, not just the surgery, but even the non-invasive, right. you know, um, what I find interesting is these nasolabial folds here, when people get a lot of filler, they disappear. And to be honest, that's what makes them otherworldly looking to me. Yeah. It's hard for me not to look at them when I see people who have chosen to do that to themselves. And, you know, it doesn't last. You have to keep going back every single Oh, yeah, time. that's the, that's the, 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 you know, the, the, the money. That's where the money is, that it doesn't last. Right. Right. Hopefully my hopefully my boss doesn't watch this particular episode. <laughs> I'll be looking for a new job. Terminus. And this was done in 2010. Yes. And this is this is from uh, a Day of the Dead show. It was my last one. Oh. I did three Day of the Dead shows. And one of them was sponsored by the Mexican Embassy in London. Oh, my goodness. And the... Mexican ambassador to London, his wife did an ofrendas for me as a, a, a okay. Day of the Dead altarpiece yes. for the, before you went into the show. That's what you saw. And it was at the Cervantes Institute. It was oh. really, really fabulous. And so this this was left over. I, you know, all of them are gone. All of them are sold except for this one. I I don't I don't know why. Maybe because it's very disturbing. It is Maybe. a bit macabre, but uh, what yes. I find so interesting again is the is this like how far like you were saying about the Van Eyck, right? How far back I can go and still know that that this is a, a, a tr I'm assuming like a train station or a tro trolley station. It tr uh, well, it could be either. I don't know. Yeah. It's just I, well, I think it was these, but maybe this is just part of what makes it work. We have a trolley here in Boston, which is maybe what my mom. All right. Was All right. Here. But and the and the figures and the debris and the fact that these figures are more skeletal, but this person is still clothed and are they? And this one on the cell phone. I think that's cool. Let me see if I can zoom in on this couple. Earbuds connected. So so it's a modern commentary. But when you're looking at it, it does have this sort of, you know, um, older feel. Yeah, like I mean, back I, in time feel. I, I am um, the whole thing about life being so precious and fleeting and then spending it all on your phone. And, yeah. and like a zombie. So I, I pictured them like zombies. Yeah. But um, yeah, that was part of the whole, my whole Day of the Dead show, which is, I did three of them. The, the first one was inspired by my mother's death. And I had been very, very close to my mom. And um, it shocked me that people didn't like to say your mom died. They would say your mom passed your mom is in a better place. Your mom isn't suffering anymore. No one said, oh, I'm sorry, your mom died. Yeah, yes. It was very bizarre. Yes. So yeah. anyway, I noticed that about my culture. Anyway, so my Spanish friend, Maria Jose, mm -hmm. said to me, I want to take you to the Day of the Dead in Mexico festival. And she had been there before. She knew everything, everywhere. And I said, no, thank you. Why would I want to go to it? I didn't know anything about it. I mean, this is the early okay. 2001. Okay, okay. Um, and I thought, I didn't, want, I didn't want to go to a dead fest. I said, no, thank you, because I'm very polite. And she said, you're going. 
So she schlepped me there. Yes. And I was so amazed at the healthy way right. the Mexicans yes. deal with death. They were, we went to a picnic on graves in the evening. There were people dressed up like skeletons walking around. There was skeleton candy. There was, you know, death is a part of life. I mean, it is, it is. We're all gonna die, but we don't wanna, in the Western society, we don't wanna know that. I do, you know, aging is bad. Um, you know, if you age and you die, you're a loser in Western society, basically. So um, I was so, I went, oh my God, this is so, it changed my life basically. Yeah. So yeah. I had, I thought I have to do a show only a la Lipton I, I, about a Jewish New York death, day of the dead show. So no color, but twisted and, and sarcastic and humorous in a lot of ways. And so doing that first show was very, it was cathartic for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it was very successful too. It's interesting. I had the show in London, but I got on TV, you know, uh, Spanish television came, Mexico. I mean, London didn't want to know it. You know, I just like, yeah. ew. Oh, so are they death averse <laughs> there as well? Or? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I, I find uh, like I love movies like Coco and uh, Book of Love because I I do I have a um, uh, not an obsession with death. Like I'm not sure if you've ever read Evelyn was the loved one. Yes. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, that was so good. And it's like one of my favorite yeah. books. And I read it in huh. high school and I have probably read it like five or six times. And as an adult, of course, I look at it and realize I might have just been a messed up kid, but I love the book and I love all the aspects of death. And um, I remember as a young child going to a relative's funeral and disappearing upstairs into all the rooms where they, you know, like make the decisions about what what casket you're going to be in. And now I'm like such a green burial girl. I'm still obsessed with death, but not anything to do with the traditional way. You know, my father was Jewish. And so when he died, it was a very simple pine box. And there was something to be said for that. You know, I, uh, I appreciated the, the non-commercialization of death. Well, when but my parents died, they were totally, they were Jewish, but they were atheists. And oh. so they were just uh, cremated, the hospital cremated them. I didn't yes. even get anything from them. I didn't get a, uh, a, an urn. I didn't get anything, nothing. There was absolutely nothing. And so when I went to Mexico and the, uh, we went to a village that had the, the dead man of the year, that's the tra literal translation. So this man was the dead guy of the year and the house, his house was open, his widow, allowed everyone to come in. You got a little cup of chocolate and there was an altar to him and it had all his lovely, it has his tchotchkes. It yes. had all his yes. lovely, the things that he loved in life. Yes. It had all his favorite food. And I thought, oh, if only my mom could have had an altar to her, you know, an altar, because my mother was so lovely and fabulous. And she was just, you know, her ashes, it was like garbage. It was just like, you know, nothing. And I have nothing. I mean, I do have her memory and I do still love her and everything, but there was no physical thing that I could go to and go, oh, mom, you know, I miss you kind of thing. Right. So right. This, this exhibition was my physical thing. Wonderful. I, 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 I love that tangible nature of it to your work. And, and I just before we move to the next piece, I love the escalator. <laughs> like I've been lingering on it here. This idea that, you know, like you said, it's a part of life. Every day people are dying mm -hmm. and they're waiting on this track. It's kind of like in Harry Potter. Where are we going on? <laughs> we don't really know where we're going. In King's Cross Station. <laughs> so we're going to move on to. Oh, yes. Okay. The consumption done in 2011. The ceiling is a thousand million faces going towards the light. You can't really see it in this. So these here? Yeah, they're all faces going into the light. And the money, the dollar signs and the 
ch angels and the piles of cans piles and of cans i just noticed that and that's what all of this that's what all, all of this cans. is made of yes yeah, so it's all made of cans so it's again cans. i'm getting that escher feel but no is he an influence or not really no i draw much better than escher yes, by the way. <laughs> i'm left-handed he was right-handed he didn't know what he was doing but this was the second drawing I did when I moved back to the USA because okay. in London you have a neighborhood grocery store and you have a selection of three cereals let's say for the sake of argument you can have 50 teas but only three cereals <laughs> so when I came here oh. and went into an American I mean, supermarket, not grocery store, supermarket, even the name is different. Yeah. Um, the amount of option, I was, I almost had a panic attack because yeah, unless you go in there knowing exactly what you want, mm -hmm. you are screwed. <laughs> That's very true. And, and it's really there almost like the title is so appropriate because it's almost like if you don't know what you want, you're going to really overbuy and particularly and not the things that you really need. And also the consumption is also a spiritual, it's a religious connotation as well. Like the, you know, the assumption of the virgin or, mm -hmm. so it's, it's that, kind. that's why it's very church light here because America, the U S not you know, North America, the yeah. U S is very, this is the culture. This is the life. This is the society. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's consume, consume, consume. And mm -hmm. that's what is the save thing. Cause there's a lot of things about, you know, saving money. So, so it's like saving your soul, save, you know, save yourself and consume in the UK and, uh, and the very top is champagne. With the balloons. It's just, uh, and the detail and the perspective and the floor. And the I want to tell you something. I went to one of the best art universities in the USA, Carnegie Mellon University, but it was the 70s and they did not teach us perspective. They said to us, just throw the paint on or it's just art for art's sake, just make a mark, just do what you want. And I cut my classes and I tried to teach myself perspective. I didn't quite make it. I tried to teach myself. So all my, I don't know perspective. I make it, I mean, all my drawings are slightly off because I'm not, I don't know two point perspective, three point. I just, I just make it, try to make it look real. <laughs> yes. So that, I mean, if only I had learned perspective in my art school, that would have helped me tremendously. Sure, sure. Shop. 2009 that is from also from the show weapons of mass delusions and um that was also in the liverpool uh, cultural center and i <laughs> i i drew a thousand million billion shopping bags in there i mean i just tortured myself basically in the uk you know stores are called shops i see okay okay and did you complete this while you were there? Yes, it's 2009. I didn't move back till 2011. Okay, okay. Yeah. And that and um, that awning, <clears throat> that's a million billion little tiny lines to make it look like it's uh, woven. Yeah, I, I am sure in person, the detail is obviously much, much more um, clear than yes. what we're seeing here. But again, that brickwork and the, 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 the pole that you use to bring down the bigger awning and all of the detail. And again, it speaks to that, you know, consumerism and the consumption that seems to plague our our countries and our world also, so not everyone in the world obviously but but to those also, who have the means it's also destroying the planet it is. and the background you know the the sort of sky is a thousand million crosshatched light pencil lines 
So I know someone, you were saying that someone had asked you this previously, but how long would it take to complete a work like this? And do you only work on one piece at a time or do you find yourself migrating to different pieces and then coming back to it? No, because one piece totally consumes me. I am totally in there. My imagination's in there. It's like reading a really, really, really good book. You don't want to put it down. And you don't want to go off to another book because you're in the book. Sure. So, uh, no, I only do one picture at a time because my total, I'm, I'm just in there. Sure. And as I said before, I have no freaking idea how long they take me. I start it. I work all day, every day. I do a section at a time. I don't say, oh, I'm going to make this whole drawing. I just say, I'm going to do the left-hand side. Okay. Um, because... You see that line, uh, uh, the black of the window on the bottom, that that line? Yes, that took me about a week because that's not going, you know, roughly with a big black pencil. That's cross hatching it and making it black. So over and over and over, over and you get over the darkness and that over. you want. And when you get up close, you can see the lines. See, you can't really see them on a screen, but you no. can see the lines when you get close you can sort of see them here a little bit but the resolution is just so yeah. like it's very pixelated you know yeah. still so uh, I, you see if i knew that this would take me let's say for the sake of argument six weeks i would be depressed oh. <laughs> and i would go oh my god six weeks i don't know if it's worth it so what i do is i just go ooh. Can I do this? Can I do a million billion bricks? Can I do a thousand million shopping bags? Let's see if I can do it. I'm, I don't say, how long is that going to take me? Oh my God. I don't do that. I just go, ooh, ooh, like a kid, you know, like yeah. a kid who's making a sandcastle and the sandcastle is ginormous and the waves are going to come and destroy the sand, but you don't care. You just want to make the sandcastle. Yeah, it's very ephemeral, like you're in the moment when you are doing it. And that's um, the moment is all you have. So splendid. Okay, and this is the last, um, this is the last image that we will look at um, today. And I think this is the one that Hope might have used in some of the um, social marketing, the fourth horseman done in 2005 yes this is the oldest one and this is okay. also from this is from the first day of the dead show that i did and this is the only one that didn't sell um interesting so very interesting i will say in my brain because i've been so lucky to be able to talk to so many artists uh through this program uh juan juan varela is an artist that is exhibiting over in the torrents Delamo Mall in Torrance. And it's a collaboration with the Art Museum uh, in a program called Window. And his mm -hmm. work is being displayed in the window. And he has, he did a talk the other day, all in Spanish. Uh, and he has a figure like this, except, oh, I wish I could remember the name. There's a name, there's a dance that's done uh, where they wear, women wear dresses, but it's a skeleton on a skeletal horse. I will have to look that up, Escutera or something like that. Hope's watching that. and she's saying the words right now. But um, very, uh, whatever that was, I had to look it up. And um, I'm going to look it up while we're talking. And very engaging. But but the bone, like the work, the bone work, is that from leaving the canvas, is that from leaving the paper behind it white? The bone is the paper. The bone is the paper. And the scythe is the paper. And the, okay. The so everything around me is drawn. Okay. That, that in and of itself to me is just an art. Being able to leave that space, but have it be so incredibly detailed. Well, that's why I start off with a cartoon, which is a line drawing. And that's the, I don't draw immediately into anything. I am erasing and putting on lines and erasing and putting on lines until I get the cartoon right. And then, 
then I have my fun and then I put on music, put on headphones, and then I go into, I call it coloring it in because that's very funny. It makes me laugh, but yeah. I go into the drawing and I start filling it in. But in actuality, yes. And I, and I, and, and like even your, even your people down here. And so this was for day of the dead. Yes. Like the people are all being swept up into the scythe. They're all being swept. Oh yes, so up. here they go. They're they're going yep. here into here into the luminosity of this the light and the hair. Oh, yeah, now, do, tiny hair. Do you have any like your 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 skeletal skeletons are so anatomically right. <laughs> well, you know what? In London, I lived I lived in ha near Harley Street, which is a doctor's where all the doctors live, and they had medical supply stores for medical students. And I bought I call him George. I bought a little skeleton. He's about a foot high, and I use him for a lot of things. Uh, no, actually, he's about three feet high, and okay. um, and and I had to look up a horse skeleton for this so i see okay i had to use a an actual photograph of a horse skeleton but what i like to do when i have to use a reference yes is not copy the photograph okay because that's what i was going to ask you on some of that early noise the were... hell out of me that okay. you know people send me drawings and go oh look at this isn't this amazing and the person just copied the photograph you know why not just be a photographer why are you bothering I mean I want my imagination to play that's why I'm drawing I want to play so copying a photograph is too is work it's yeah. work and I want to play so I need references sometimes like with the horse skeleton or let's say I have to do a car of a specific age or something like that I mean, I can't do that off the top of my head, but once I get the cartoon of it, the outline, then I play. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, yeah, I am like at a loss for words. So it's just incredible. All the line work to create the back and to know that as you're putting in the line work that you have to leave these lines, it's, it's, uh, stunning well you have to go very 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 slowly i'll tell you that much yes i would i wish we were just in la for a month in um march and i wish this show was up when we were there so you could have come visit me yes i could have come visit you well extraordinary extraordinary so um let me zoom back out to get the whole piece And no, uh, this is just strictly drawings on the walls of gallery two. There's no sculptural element. There's no nothing that this is. This just is stuff. Pencil on paper. Pencil on paper. And you know, you make a valid point that when you're first um, starting out, but the idea that, that those um, inexpensive, although now I'm sure you buy extraordinarily good quality pencils, but- uh, No, the paper, it's the paper that's expensive. Is it? Oh yeah. And it's a certain oh, yeah. kind of paper that you must uh, purchase to receive the color or receive the graphite in the way that it does. Yeah, the marks. You see, people always ask me what kind of pencil you use, but that's not the important bit. It's the paper. You can use any pencil on a good piece of paper and the marks will, sh you'll get black and you'll get white, white and you'll get the marks showing up. That's, that's what's important. The paper. And do you have a, do you, do you have it made or is there a- Oh, no, 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 it? no, no. I, I, I found, you know, um, there's, um, uh, oh God, I can't think of, but I use a very, very large roll and it's very hard to come by. It's legion. It has six foot rolls. I'm doing very large drawings now, Yes, but I can't think of my beloved- Oh my God, like you, I, I can't, you know, once yeah. you a certain age, all your names <laughs> leave your head. You it know, is. I spoke three languages. I spoke Dutch, French, and now I can't even speak English. I mean, 
Jesus. Um, well, I have paper that I really, really love, and I can't think of the name. And now we're going to break up because it's going to be offended. No, well, that's okay. They they will not break up because uh, <laughs> because the work is so extraordinary, and they thank should be honored you. to be providing you the paper for it. I would like to thank you so very much, Lori, for coming out and chatting with us today about your work in Gallery Two. Um, it's wonderful that it's a solo show. I will be sure to include your um, website link in the YouTube posting. And uh, we would encourage folks after one of the main reasons why we do these is so that you can kind of get some background and, um, you know, hear directly from the artist exactly what goes into creating these works that you see in the gallery. Um, we understand that it's not possible for us to have a guided tour every time we come in with the artist, but uh, these are sort of the next best thing. So we're, we're so pleased that you came out to chat with us today. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, I enjoyed talking to you, sweetheart. Thank you so much.